Hello, Brian McCarthy here from Boulder Break. Delighted to be back with part two of this tutorial series where we will be making this. In this tutorial, we will be lighting, texturing and shading our scene and looking into how to render particles. Before we get started, please consider going onto the Bolt and Break store and having a look at what we have available on there. Also, there's a new shader pack of abstract glass for Redshift. It's really cool. Go check it out. Please like, subscribe and comment. It really helps out the channel and it's a free thing that you can do. Without further ado, let's get started on this because I'm sure you're sick of listening to me. We have our scene. We've built this. If you haven't seen part one and you need to figure out how to build this, go watch part one. We have this system built out. It's all cached. We're going to bring in our render panel here. Let's dock that here. And we're going to create a material standard material i'm just going to open that and dock that here because this is going to be our first material let's call this volume and let's start looking at how to get the visuals actually rendered on this and then we're going to go into our camera we're going to create one we'll come back to this later but set this to 80. let's just get our camera view looking okay right now and bring that there and i want this kind of zoom in approach with the camera Let's just sort out our coordinates here. 180. Put our renderer on and bring that right out. So camera is set up. The particle systems we've set up with the tracer aren't rendering. To get that working, we have a redshift object tag on our tracer. Select that and change the mode to hair strands. And now we have our tracers rendering, which is great. But they're really harsh, right? They're they just look a bit harsh and let's go into in the curve we have this scale panel here first of all bring the thickness down to 0.5 somewhere in the middle just hold control and click and you'll create another point the other points just drag down either side and you'll just create a nice fall off and it won't be as jagged uh, maybe bring this down even a little bit and there you go the next thing we want to do is show our particles emitting. And how do we do that? Select the redshift object tag that is on our particle group 01 and just select spheres instances and put that up to three. And there's our particles in green. First thing we are going to texture now are volume particles, but we're going to put this onto our volume measure. I'm going to open our volume measure which is going to open here in our particles panel before we start texturing the volume measure i want to add lights to the scene so we're going to bring in a area light here bring that up uh bring the p to minus 90. go into your object and maybe just select a cool blue bring the intensity maybe down to 20. The Y can be 50 and then hold control while your area light is selected and just drag down to duplicate that. We're going to call the first light top and the second light bottom. We're going to have our bottom light selected and drag that down. We're going to go into the coordinates of our bottom light and put that to 90. Change the color to a more pinkish red. Maybe a little bit more red right there. Yeah, there we go. Maybe a little bit lighter. And it's quite hot either side, so let's drag it down. Uh, we just get a bit of contrast in the lighting, a bit of warmth. We also get to, when these start to texture, it'll also just bring out the highlights. Okay, let's start getting to the fun bit, which is texturing. So we have our volume shader. Let's bring in a ramp. Go down here and load up the preset and let's use black, violet, orange, maybe. Plug that in to your color. Make sure that your shader is actually on your volume me measure. We'll we start to see the change already and then plug it in to your emission. Select your standard material, scroll down and you'll see emission here. If we bring this up to five, that'll blow out all the kind of shadows and shading of it. So we want to maybe bring it down to one. I think that's still a bit too much. 
maybe 0.5 scroll up bring your transmission to 0.5 maybe 0.3 cool and what we'll start to get let's just bring in our camera just a tad bit more so we can actually see what's going on we start to get some reflectivity which is quite cool maybe bring the emission down to 0.4 so we're getting a little bit more transparency and the other objects in our scene will actually start to light it up even more because we're going to add more emissive materials we're actually going to add two incandescent materials so the next thing we want to do is go to create materials incandescent and call this glow tracer drag your glow tracer down onto your tracer open that up and we have a nice incandescent material here let's actually go to the spot in the timeline where we have particles and tracer effects and there you can see so it's like you take off the tracer and you'll see our tracers rendering put the glow tracer on and we get what we want there which is great bring the intensity up to 10 lovely that might be a bit too much but we're going to bring in another ramp and we're going to add the ramp to the color and nothing's happening that's because we have a black to white ramp load your presets bring in black violet again and nothing is still happening and this is because we need to bring in a node called a vertex attribute node and this tells redshift to target certain vertices that can't just be kind of generally mapped without extra information in your vertex attribute name select presence go to curves and select curve id color and then bring this out color and stick it into your alt port and there you go you get a nice variation of colors here which is lovely we need to create another incandescent material for our particles so call this particles drag this on to particle group 01 just to note here it is worth noting that there is a node called color user data and in this instance we don't necessarily need to use it if you go into presence in the attribute name go down to particles particle color this basically gives you more control over these objects but if we put it into the color kind of targeting these particle groups here you can see a change in color right um it's a bit there's a bit more fall off to the color if we take this off it's a little bit bright for now we can just leave this off we don't want to overcomplicate too much but just be aware of that color user data attribute maybe bring down the incandescence to five here there we go okay very cool now quite nice we're nearly actually there for the most part um, I did do some post and after effects if that is something you want to look at please let me know in the comments let's look at what I did with the camera I created a null put the camera under this null I'll just call this camera and then I right clicked and I used a vibration tag and I enabled position I put this to like let's say 0 0.01 for now to 10 10 and you'll see here let's just turn this off 0.1 might work better a little bit of movement not enough actually so 0.5 let's keep bringing that up yeah there you go so you get a little bit of movement there from the camera and the reason I do that is because you have this big object that's emitting this energy and like the camera's not gonna stay still right it's gonna there's gonna be some form of energy that's gonna dissipate towards other objects around it so it just encapsulates that feeling of energy and then the other thing I did was I created another null called this focus and I changed the shape of the null to a sphere and I just made the radius of that sphere quite big and I then in optical of our redshift camera I put that as our focus maybe an easier way to do it is to create another sphere put that as focus let's delete that one and we have this sphere here and we can see this as our focus let's bring this down to 50 and just turn it off go back into your redshift camera make sure you have the optical tab selected and in object depth of field bring in your focus here and have focus selected let's just make sure that this is going to work right if we bring down the attribute all the way to point one you'll see here that the depth of field is working but our focus isn't necessarily where we want to be placed
based on where this focus point is, we can change the bokeh and depth of field. And there you go. That is looking kind of okay. Obviously, it's way too much aperture. Maybe 2.8 is a better one, which is cool. And you can see it actually working in real time. So you can play with the depth of field how you want. Finally, we want to add some post. So let's expand this. Go down and blue and flare and straight streak are all important here into just adding to the general tone and visuals. Bring some flare in maybe if you want. But streak will really, you'll see here, these kind of streaks of light are quite nice. And you can just play around this with this how you please. And the more emission you add to your incandescent material, the more intensity. So if we go in here to our glow tracer, the more intensity you add to this, the more this bloom and flare and streak will add to these post effects, which is really cool. That's pretty much it. That's how I did it. I hope this was helpful. Please like, subscribe, comment, all those good things. Check out the Bold and Break store. The best Christmas present everyone can give me is to like and subscribe. And if you're feeling super generous with your time, give us a comment. Thank you for watching and goodbye.